I am a cheater, meaning I have slept with someone outside of my committed relationship. In this video, I'm going to talk about nine reasons most people cheat, and I'm also going to talk about some of my regrets. This COVID-19 lockdown has given me a lot of time to think. Something that came to mind was the time I cheated on this woman who was extremely tolerant, extremely good to me, and extremely good for me. My name is Romani Malco. I am the founder of The PEP, the people's empowerment platform. And you are watching another episode of Advice from a Jackass. I have made all the mistakes for you. And this channel allows me to share insights gained from those mistakes in hopes that it might make your life better. We cover everything from entrepreneurship to aren't you going to do some shit and everything in between. You know what I mean? All right, stop fronting. Hit that subscribe button. And let's get into it. I thought I had a good understanding of what drove me to cheat, but my perspective at the age of what, 28, 29, pales in comparison to my understanding of life at the ripe age of 51. So I decided to take a deeper look into myself and that situation. I even even looked into some of the world's most recognized relationship psychologists to try to get a better understanding of what drives people to commit infidelity. What I found goes way beyond the scope of what I believed and I thought it was very important to share. Whether for novelty, independence, freedom, or just trying to relieve some tension, there are so many reasons that people commit infidelity. And when you really look into it, no two incidents are the same. I'm going to go over the nine most common psychological reasons for why people cheat. And once we get to the end of the video, I'm going to share my personal experience and some of my regrets. Number one is loss of passion. And let me start this off with a quote from the world-renowned relationship therapist, Esther Perel. Once we strayed because marriage was not supposed to deliver love and passion. Now we strayed because marriage fails to deliver the love, passion, and undivided attention it promised. That's from her book, The State of Affairs, Rethinking Infidelity. Many relationships and marriages start with the honeymoon phase. In this phase, couples may tend to show the best versions of themselves. They end up acting out an idealistic image of the relationship as a point of reference. As time moves forward, they see how their partners really are in contrast to the ideal expectations that they've set for themselves. This feeds into a loop of frustration and disillusionment, and the culminative effects of this can lead to a breakdown in the relationship. Number two is neglect. When the channels of communication shut down, many feel a powerful sense of loss and neglect inside a relationship. People are more likely to plan that it's when their partners no longer give them that same level of attention, doting, and care. Most of us want to be desired, and to bridge this gap, we look for it elsewhere, sometimes in the form of an affair. When asked the reason they had an affair, most women admitted to seeking validation of being desirable from others. Number three, exacting revenge. Infidelity causes more infidelity. I've experienced this personally. Individuals with a strong moral standard are not likely to cheat on their partners. However, if a person finds themselves the victim of their partner's extramarital affairs, that may just be the tipping point to exact revenge and anger. This is an unhealthy and indirect way to handle the central issue according to Lauren Dummett of the Triune Therapy Group. Cheaters justifying an act of infidelity as evening the score. You've heard the saying, two wrongs don't make a right. And though two wrongs don't make it right, I've been told by women who have been cheated on that they too needed to go out and even the score before they could even begin to deal with the relationship issues, see a therapist or a counselor. And some of those couples have since gone on to get married, have children, and a healthy monogamous relationship to my knowledge. Number four, acting on fantasies. Over 90% of men fantasize about people they meet in real life. Often a strong desire to be with another person is enough of a motivation to actually act on those desires. Men who maintain strong fantasies are more likely to cheat if the opportunity presents itself. A good friend of mine told me that some people are only as loyal as their options. This sounds a lot like that. Sometimes it may feel as though it's empowering to act on something that you know you're not supposed to do. The motivation may not change, but the forbidden act ends up feeling as if they're doing what they want to do. Number five, seeking a different version of oneself. A lot of times we think of infidelity as a conflict between two people, between partners. Rarely do we ever stop to think of it as a conflict within ourselves. Most individuals in long-term relationships attest to a strong intimacy, connection, and genuine love for their partners, painting a profile of a faithful relationship. It is not necessarily in their nature to 
cheat. And even still, it's not a sure fire formula for loyalty. Sometimes it's not really about the partner. It's the individual's desire to be more adventurous or to take more risks or to have more experiences. Simply wanting to prove to themselves that once and for all, they can actually be an adventurous person may be enough to drive someone to have an unfaithful encounter outside of their relationship. There's a great quote from Charles J. Orlando where he says, they didn't cheat because of who you are, they cheated because of who they are not. Number six is narcissistic tendencies. Some will find themselves in a relationship with a narcissist. Narcissists are egotistic, arrogant, and attention-seeking sociopaths. They are frequently found at the center of many incidents of physical and or emotional infidelity. In 2006, psychologist Joshua Foster looked into how narcissists operate inside of intimate relationships. People with narcissistic personalities practice what they call unrestricted sociosexuality. They do not associate a sexual act as an exclusive intimacy, but instead see it as only a means of self-gratification. They practice a level of self-entitlement that is extremely damaging for any well-meaning relationship. And if his findings are accurate, our society is just teeming with narcissists because I've heard tons of stories from friends who've been involved with people exactly like this. Number seven, challenging the institution. People sometimes find themselves in a power struggle between their pride and the status quo. In a stifling relationship, some may act out in infidelity as a way of saying, I'm in control. For some, taking matters into their own hands and being independent may run in the opposite direction of the relationship. A person may express this by cheating on their partner. It's not so much a conflict with the relationship per se, it's more a conflict with what the relationship represents presents and its perceived restrictions. Number eight, skirting the boundaries. Some people like to test the gray areas of a relationship. Some may interpret sexual adultery as a minimum offense, whereas flirting on a dating app being the maximum offense. There are two broad categories for infidelity. There's physical infidelity and there's emotional infidelity. In a study conducted in the University of Wisconsin in 2008, researchers found a stark difference in between what men considered infidelity and what women considered infidelity. Men are more likely to be upset over sexual infidelity than women. In comparison, over 70% of women said they would be more likely to be upset if their partners engaged in emotional infidelity. By the way, if you are finding any value in this content, this would be the time to click the like button. We still got a ways to go, but I've already developed a better understanding of what it was that led me to cheat in the first place. Maybe you've identified something as to why you may have been cheated on or why you cheated cheated. If you don't mind, could you please share that in the comments? That is valuable information. Maybe it will help give someone else insight as to why they are tempted to cheat or why they too were cheated on. And once again, if you haven't already, now would be the time to click the like button. Number nine, sexual gratification. When you really get down to the nitty gritty, sometimes people just want to have sex. Individuals are more likely to cheat on their partners when they don't feel sexually gratified within their relationships. A large survey comprising of over 500 men in 400 women looked into the different factors that come into causes of infidelity. Women who believed they were unhappy and sexually incompatible with their partners were more likely to cheat. But there's a lot more to it. My dad slept around a lot. And one day I asked him why, like, what did you get? What did he get out of it? And he said, you know, uh, gratification, you know, hearing someone tell you, you still got it. And so in my opinion, yes, there are all of these varying reasons for why people cheat. But I also believe that age plays a role. Sometimes Sometimes you're going through a midlife crisis. Sometimes you have a much more juvenile interpretation of what an intimate relationship consists of. Sometimes you're just looking for an excuse to ruin a relationship that you believe should have been over a long time ago. You simply don't have the heart to call it off. And that was partly my reason for cheating. I also think that number four was a contributing factor in simply wanting to live a more adventurous life, simply wanting to try new things. I was young, I was self-destructive, and I didn't have as much experience as I would have liked to have had at that point in my life. And I felt as though this relationship had taken up quite a bit of my younger years and not having the heart to break up with this person, I simply cheated with hopes of being caught. And I know that that's the truth because I ended up telling on myself anyway. And that resulted in number three, exacting revenge. She went out and did the exact same thing. And though it was me who made the first attempt at destroying our relationship, knowing that she had cheated was torment. I 
could not deal with it. Honestly, my ego could not deal with it. I was young, I was inexperienced, I was inconsiderate, and if I were to really, really be honest, I exhibited a little bit of number six. I felt like there were some narcissistic tendencies in there. Needless to say, I had a lot to learn and I was not deserving of her. My biggest regret is that I broke the trust of someone who was consistently supportive, loving, giving, and just honestly good for me like genuinely cared about me. Look, I don't beat myself up about it today. It was 20 years ago. But another one of my regrets is the psychological damage that it caused. I'm sure that I made it more difficult for her to trust openly. I already had trust issues and now this just compounded that. Now I was walking around paranoid that in every relationship I was in, I was possibly being cheated on. And see, what a lot of us don't understand is that when we carry out these acts, like when we go out and we cheat, we are subconsciously convincing ourselves that that is the reality. And by subconsciously convincing ourselves of that reality, it makes it very difficult for us to maturely engage wholeheartedly, trustingly, and openly in a monogamous relationship. Another issue that comes with it is with this fear of being cheated on, you might find yourself seeking out the most trustworthy person possible. And in doing so, you compromise in all the other areas that you once needed to be stimulated in. So your relationship becomes not necessarily a fulfilling relationship, simply a relationship in which you can trust the individual that you are with will not cheat on you. Speaking from experience, that is not the formula for happiness. Going one step further, if the role models, the parents, or the people who raised you committed infidelity and that infidelity disrupted the household, you have a higher chance of committing infidelity. There is so much more to cover on this, but as far as my regrets go, I let down a friend. I betrayed a friend. Maybe five, six years after the fact, she and I were able to get on the phone and talk together and really profess our love and appreciation for being in one another's lives when we were in one another's lives. But for me, one of the biggest takeaways is that I could never be someone to ever cheat again. Now that we have a clearer understanding of the most common reasons people commit infidelity, how do we avoid the pitfalls of infidelity? How do we become more emotionally stable and not make the mistake of infidelity? Esther Perel is a couple psychotherapist out of New York. She has counseled hundreds of couples struggling with infidelity. She roots at the heart of the issue is a conflict between love and desire. She says striking a perfect balance between the security of love and the novel of desire with your partner produces the recipe for staying power in a relationship. A nurturing and secure relationship is a life goal we naturally look for. It's a survival instinct that motivates us to find a haven in our lives. The need to cultivate desire runs opposite to this. In seeking novelty and excitement, one can mistakenly commit infidelity. The famous French novelist Marcel Proust said it's not about finding new places, it's about looking with new eyes. Understanding the reasons for infidelity draws a clearer picture and enables us to address the issue at its root. Failure in communication, misguided expectations, a lack of commitment, each of them represent a different facet of the problem and each of them requires a different approach. If you take any advice from a jackass, take this advice. By the way, if you really want to get involved in the conversation, maybe even share your insight with my audience, please request an invite to peprequest.com. Achieving emotional stability in a relationship is a two-way street. Clarifying communication channels and goals will help us grow in love and desire with our significant others. Psychotherapists say that if we stick to these principles, we have a much better chance of staying not only emotionally stable, but faithful and loyal to one another. If you find this content valuable, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. My name is Romani Malco. I am the founder of The Pep, the people's empowerment platform, and this concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass.